Hello everyone, this is just a short video which aims to give you an overview of the microcytic hyperchromic anemias. And this is not going to be a very long video because it's in a nutshell version which will just uh, focus on the common causes of microcytic hyperchromic anemias. Before we start, um, let me just um, endorse my YouTube account. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Chris Almond fan page on Facebook, and also do visit my website at chrisaalmonnotes.com for more materials that I'm sharing online. Let's move on to our discussion tonight. Microcytic hypochromic anemias develop due to defective hemoglobin synthesis. When hemoglobin synthesis is affected, hemoglobin concentration will decrease. And if the hemoglobin concentration is decreased, that will affect the maturation of our red blood cells, giving us microcytic, hypochromic types of red cells. And so, the question is, why do um, our hemoglobin concentrations decrease? That's because of a lot of reasons. And to understand that better, let's see what composes a hemoglobin molecule. A hemoglobin molecule is composed of a heme and a globin portion. And for us to be able to produce a heme molecule, we will combine iron with protoporphyrin. If ever there is a problem with iron metabolism, such as when we have deficiency states, we will be able to develop an, a type of anemia that we call iron deficiency anemia. Or sometimes we will have um, normal amounts of iron, but the problem is we cannot utilize it very well. So defective utilization will also affect iron metabolism. And the kind of anemia that arises from this problem is called the anemia of chronic disease, now commonly referred to as anemia of chronic inflammation. If iron is okay, but protoporphyrin is not, meaning if the problem is in the synthesis of protoporphyrin, then that will give rise an anemia we call sideroblastic anemia. Iron and protoporphyrin are components of heme, and so if iron deficiency anemia, anemia of chronic disease, and sideroblastic anemias are the types of anemias given to you, then please know that the problem is in the heme portion of the hemoglobin molecule. Okay? But what if the heme is okay but there's still microcytic hypochromic anemias? There's one more component that will be affected, okay, and that will be the globin. And if the globin portion is affected, that will give rise to inherited conditions known as thalassemia. It can be an alpha thalassemia or a beta thalassemia. Thalassemias are quantitative defects in hemoglobin concentration, okay? So you can understand the common causes of microcytic hyperchromic anemias by trying to understand the composition of a hemoglobin molecule. Or you can use a mnemonic to make you remember these four conditions. Usual mnemonic that we use here is ATIS. We just use the initials of the four common conditions to make a word. And so that's your ATIS, A um, meaning anemia of chronic disease, T for thalassemia, I for iron deficiency anemia, and S for sideroblastic anemia. So whatever works for you, as long as you know the common causes, then you're already okay with the overview of microcytic hyperchromic anemias. This is just a short video, and so that will be the end of our discussion. And inviting everyone to watch out for the next videos that I will be releasing discussing in details these types of anemias so that we can... um answer our exam questions in the near future with full confidence. Hopefully, with God's help, of course. Good night, everyone, and God bless you. Um, remember that God loves you so much, so keep it up. You can do it. Bye!